Honestly, I'm just rooting for Vignette, Philo, and Tourmaline to all be just a throuple and just move to a farm and like get away from this nonsense and just milk goats and paint each other naked. That's hot. What's up, everybody? I'm Julia Loken. I'm Stevie Goldstein. I'm Lisa Chenu. And we're What's Your Sign, a comedy astrology podcast for lovers and haters. And today we're here to break down the astrology of Carnival Row. So light a candle, charge your crystals, pull a tarot card. It's time to get in the stars with What's Your Sign and Carnival Row. Let's start with vignette. White cow. A vignette? Oh, you mean vignette. Vignette. Vignette, the character, vignette. yes. <laughs> Name. Vignette. Which I did look up the definition of a vignette and it does say a moment that fades into the background with no discernible end or beginning. And if that isn't the most Pisces thing you've ever heard, I don't know wow. what to tell you. I think she's 100% a Pisces sun. I think fairies in general are very Pisces. It's this kind of ethereal, otherworldly creature um, through the veil, maybe a little bit. They can fly, but they can also, you know, be on the ground and all of that stuff. In season one, she's kind of this human trafficker with a good cause. She's trying to <laughs> smuggle the fairies out of... Um, out of harm's way. And she and Philo are so tied together. I think it's very Pisces. Um, at one point, Tourmaline says, she'll die for you rather than leave you. That's who she is. She loves you. And Pisces really have that kind of martyr thing. Um, season one, she wears the widow's braid for him. Um, and I think this is very Pisces sun because the sun represents your identity and your identity often leads you to action. She feels responsible for the people being in the bird. She feels responsible that she brought them there. Every time something happens, she feels responsible. You did good work today, girl. Not good enough. Even in episode one of season two, she's literally stealing medicine for her fellow creatures. And I think hospitals and the things of the like are also very Pisces. I feel like all the characters probably have a splash of Pisces somewhere in their chart. If she's a Pisces, then she's like a really spicy Pisces, which makes me think that maybe she's an Aries. I don't know. I'm not saying that all Aries are violent, but she definitely is a fairy who fights and she's very fierce so i could see her being an aries son you know very impulsive and the aries are known as like the babies of the zodiac too so they can be emotional in their own way that's maybe a little more intense and a little more like uh, in your face i should have done this the day we met i think a pisces moon would be nice for vignette and i'm gonna go virgo rising too i'm just gonna go go the whole big three spread i see a pisces moon i see a virgo rising I mean, Vinny is a lover at the end of the day. She's got options out here on this Carnival Rose streets. <laughs> and I think, too, once we get more into Tourmaline, I think they share a lot of connection. They're very interwoven together. And I think there's a hint of Pisces, star-crossed lovers sort of vibe. I like a Virgo, too, with, like, an Earth sign because I think of fairies with, like, Earth magic and just being of, like, the earthly realm sort of thing. And Virgos are really resourceful, observant. They're on task. And I think Vignette is that also to a T. She's going to survive and she's not going to just take shit either. So also with the Pisces moon, it might be in her house of relationships with that. And then the sun in the eighth house with sex, death, and transformation. And she's definitely fighting and and, and, and doing all things related to survival. I think she's a spicy Pisces too. I think that maybe she has an Aquarius rising. It makes her that real humanitarian thing. I mean, she even says yes. at one point, like rules weren't made for us. I find it, and also just something air. I find something mm -hmm. air. She's always like flying off and she's so solid in her ideals that I do think maybe it's uh, maybe it's a little Aquarius rising. I, I, like I agree. I think that she is a spicy Pisces. And of course, with the Pisces sun, which I, I vibe with, she could then have an Aries Mercury, an Aries Venus, because those personal planets are never more than a sign or two away from the sun. So I think that that can add to that spice. I also think that Pisces can be spicy because they're changing all of the time and they just kind of keep you guessing and so when you read some of the significations that are more fairy like but I agree with Lisa with this Aquarius rising I think that uh, she, Vignette is a Pisces sun Aquarius moon Aquarius rising because I really like that Ooh. moon in the first 
with the rising because I think that it's really clear her kind of rebellious spirit and also her own kind of conviction and authority in what she believes in. I think that is what is the strongest and that is what gives her some of that spice too. And while I agree with the Aries violence, again, I think a Venus or a Mercury could be in there where she values taking charge and being the one to do those things. I think that also feeds in really well with the Pisces kind of martyr uh, thing as well. But I think that they also have such a reverence for both life and death is a very Piscean thing. And I think that that's so much of a theme in the show that we see that people are having to deal with both things, preserving life and and caring for it and making sure that everyone is entitled to the life that they want. Uh, And then also having to care for sick people, injured people, having to literally sacrifice ourselves and go like, I am dying so that you can live. And that's very last sign of the zodiac is the last but it's also the pathway to the beginning like dissolve it all start again i think that's the it's a good reminder that you shouldn't underestimate a pisces either because i think they get forgotten at the end and it's like no i can i can restart everything because i am the end some astrologers say like karma you never ever karmically want to turn your back on a virgo or a pisces because those are the ones that like oh they may seem like they're very sweet or that they're trying to help but like if you really karmically like it's coming back for you well let's dive a little deeper and talk about philo You might want to change your trousers. I don't know about you guys. I had a really tough time thinking of a sun sign for Philo. Um, Maybe just because, like, I'm very attracted to Orlando Bloom, and that was just a problem (laughs) for me to, like, analyze it critically. Do you know his sign in real life? I purposefully did not look it up because I was like, I'm not going to let it influence my picks. Um, Did you look it up? Yeah, I mean, I have to. He's a Capricorn sign. Zero degrees, Scorpio moon, and Aquarius rising. He's hot. We want to see his blooming onion. We're we're into it. (laughs) For Philo, I thought he for sure would be a Pisces moon. Um, The whole first season, he's bearing this large secret. There is a duality to him. And I think when we think of duality, we kind of tend to go with Gemini and Libra. But Pisces is another sign that experiences duality. And it's in a different way. Gemini, I think, is this very playful kind of something to bounce off of. Uh, Libra is, you know, the scales and it's this fairness and balance. And Pisces, to me, is really about the dark and the light, you know, death and rebirth. It's those, it's that little devil and little angel on your shoulder kind of thing telling you what's right and what's wrong. He also loves, like, romance novels. Um, People always tell that tell him that they can see he's a good man. You know, I feel like that's very Pisces moon. And then in speaking of sacrifice, because I think Pisces oftentimes gets uh, thrown in with sacrifice and, and martyrdom, Philo kind of sacrifices his relationship with Vignette, which I think is a very moon thing. I think his son might be Scorpio. That was the vibe I got. Um, mostly because he's so investigative and he's kind of fighting other people's battles, especially in season one. It's a lot about him fighting battles for women. One of the women ends up being his mother. So I'm going with a Scorpio sun, Pisces moon. And then I'm kind of torn on the rising sign. I could see Aries, you know, his relationship with Portia kind of throws her off as this kind of friends with benefits thing very aries we've all been scorned by an aries hell i'm married to one you know things do also just seem to kind of work out for him so i think having that natural chart set up maybe gives him a little bit of luck there and then also just having this kind of natural fire underneath i agree i'm gonna i'll double down on a scorpio son i mean very you know take a shot scorpio attribute but being the detective of the zodiac You know, Scorpios are definitely very curious, but in like a little deeper than say how a Gemini is curious, right? Like they want to turn over the rocks and see all the bugs come out and they don't look away from the hard stuff. And I think that's so, that's so him and his character. And I think too, Scorpios are also really good at navigating systems while hiding in the shadows. So I think he can really have this ability to be in this human world and then know his secrets. And I think he's, I think Scorpios really have that ability to sort of, manipulate or play to wherever they have to be in. I agree with the cancer stuff. I mean, mommy issues out the wazoo. (laughs) But I think having that 
cafe understanding just really changed how we like emotionally process it. Scorpio is a water sign and there is feeling there, but I think that cancer really gives under that gruff Scorpio exterior. He has like a soft shell crab. That's just like, just really trying to find his place and rising. I agree. I think maybe because Scorpios are so mysterious, they can be hard to nail down their rising, but I can see a Sag rising. I can see like a little fire in the tank. He's got so much water, and I think Sag rising then would put his Scorpio sun in the 12th house, which that could represent for him the subconscious and these sort of unseen realms. And I think even just representing everywhere he's been in this series so far, anyways, from the literal war battleground to Carnival Row itself, he's always amongst these unique sort of systems and places. I think Sagittarius too being associated with independence and this quest that he's been on totally sort of like wraps up his whole journey in like this nice bow. I just get like pure Mars energy from Philo because he's always doing something. He's always taking action. He's never kind of sitting back and letting anything unfold. He's getting in there. I think that he really embodies kind of both sides of the Mars coin. The Aries side being the more kind of decisive fighting punching kicking stabbing uh energy and then the scorpio being that more detective that more undercover investigative probing kind of mars action mars also rules uh soldiers war police and he is all of those uh it's also fighting and f***ing and so i think he's just like truly mars incarnate uh i also like that that aries rising would put his scorpio sun in the eighth house the sun is our identity and the eighth house is sex death legacy secrets kind of real watery murky stuff and his identity was hidden to him because of a politically charged sex scandal i just don't think it gets any more eighth house sun to me than that and as we've discussed with previous characters the scorpio sun would give potentially some sag placements a mercury or a venus because i do see some sag in there. I think Scorpio can be kind of manipulative and shape shifty, but Sagittarius also has a kind of self righteous both sides ism to it. And it's kind of unclear. You know, Philo kind of does play both sides a little. It is kind of his own. I don't want to say it's just his own interest because he does care, clearly care about people and, and have values. He, you know, decides to go stand with the Fae people once he finds out that he's half Fae. So he has principles, but I just could see some, you know, again, because he's taking justice into his own hands instead of being more of a team player. I think that Aries Sag action is definitely present and i like that cancer moon again it would be in the fourth house there's clearly some family stuff going some like lineage uh trauma for him uh but also he's he's a lover too and a fighter it makes sense that him and vignette are just so hot and heavy because they're basically they're very similar they maybe they're both aries maybe they're both scorpios i, I could even see them maybe having a like a lot of chart similarities because they're it's like you've met your match when they when they come together. I think he comes off obviously a little more brooding, and I think that's where the Scorpio comes in, where she has a little bit more lightness. But I mean, everyone on the show's hot. It's like kind of an issue. It's distracting. Like, how can I they, think about their charts when everyone's just so attractive? They bond over a romance novel. I feel like it must be some sort of water connection. Like, I feel like yeah. it just has to be. Yeah, these cor- these corny mofos. Yeah. Well, let's complete the triangle. Let's talk about tourmaline. It's a funny way to show respect, isn't it? Ritual torture. Still, if that's her idea of a good time, I'm not judging them. In keeping with my Pisces theme, I'm going to go ahead and say that um, Tourmaline is a Pisces rising. Mostly in season two, we get to see this kind of witch thrust on her, this power that gets thrust on her. Um, it comes to her unwanted. She seems uncomfortable with it. As far as sacrifice goes, you know, I think she really sacrifices her body, the way she looks, and the way her world is set up when this um, dark magic is thrust upon her. There are times throughout the season where she has to kind of dig into this dark magic and take action on things that really feels like maybe, you know, it's kind of like the last straw or something she's pushed to do. Even in the first season, she's a sex worker and, you know, helping the other Faye find jobs. I mean, she introduces Vignette to the Black Ravens. Um, I find that maybe that leads me to think she's a Capricorn son, 
with the Pisces rising. She's mutable, but she's also like an action taker and a connector. And Capricorns are very money focused. They're very good with career stuff. Tourmaline's always going to be able to find a job. And to me, that's very Capricorn and very Pisces. I don't think there's a world where Tourmaline's sitting around and can't figure out like what to do. She's like figured mm-hmm. it out. As far as a moon sign, I'm not really sure. Cancer moon, maybe. I felt like there was a lot of her taking care of other women, maybe a little bit more in season one, but also in season two. That also puts her sun and moon in opposition, which I think tracks because she does have that same duality that the other characters also embody. Since I'm still feeling the Aries energy for Vignette, I was thinking of Tourmaline as a Libra sun. So on the opposite flip, we know that Aries and Libra are opposite signs. So polarities, half birthdays, if you will. It can be like a lot of the same, different side of a same coin. Um, And I think with Libras, they just have such a effortlessness to them, especially with her, her style, her vibe. I think like what you said, Lisa, to her knowing like the gossip, introducing her to the Black Raven. It's just like she knows what's up, you know, and Libras are our first sign of socialness. They're the first sign that meets people and interacts with people. And she, uh, you know, she really gets to meet people. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We know what she does. (laughs) But I think too, Tourmaline as the stone, you know, as like the actual gemstone that it is, it represents love and healing from heartbreak. And I just think that's just so sweet. I think the Capricorn energy might be in the moon space because she's so breezy, but she's no nonsense too. She's not just a total fluff pushover. And she does know how to get that coin and support herself. So I think there might be like a really earthy, holding it down cat moon in there. And like I said before, I like an earth sign for our full-fledged fey fairy people because earth magic represent. And I'll go Pisces rising just to kind of hit on what Lisa said. You know, she's very, you know, tapped into the witchiness. Pisces can be that sign about connecting to like higher power. It's ruled by Neptune, which is about dreams and visions and illusions. And I mean, she's she's got psychic power now. So I think that that definitely matches up with traits of Pisces and I could see that sort of being on that rising how you present yourself how you're going out and working in the world I kind of am on on the same wavelength of you both uh, in terms of tourmaline sun sign, I can definitely see the Capricorn. I can see the Libra, but my gut instinct was Taurus. Um, mm. And Taurus is an earth sign like Capricorn. And it's also ruled by Venus like Libra. So I think that the the energies are there. This to me also speaks to confirming that Pisces rising, which is, you know, Pisces is ruled by Neptune, fog, mist. So it's kind of hard to tell what direction the sunlight is coming from, if you will. But she's very dependable and reliable. I know Taurus is the one that I go to when I would need help with something. And so maybe I am, uh, you know, a little biased in that way, but I'm going Taurus sun. Agreed, Pisces rising. I mean, we can't say it enough. She's just like a literal fairy. And that's how I would describe anyone with a t- Pisces rising. But she also has this way of being, you know, innocent and wise and powerful, but also kind of coy and shy and I think that that lends itself to her work as a sex worker because it's you know pulling in clientele but also why she would be chosen to get this gift or curse of of the uh, high respects power whichever way you're looking at it but kind of that you know hiding in plain sight sort of thing and I like the Capricorn moon vibes because I do feel that Capricorn in there she has this uh, she says at one point someone asks her how she's feeling and she says like oh just the standard doom gloom and inner torment and uh, as a Capricorn moon (laughs) I concur that is kind of our state the moon represents our emotional internal state of being and Capricorn is holding it together she seems genuinely like disturbed by how this a uh, newfound power has kind of med- made her feel unstable in this way that also kind of Capricorn moon, the moon doesn't love being in Capricorn because Capricorn things don't want to be fluctuating and moving. And that's like kind of what our emotions do. So I think that that really speaks to her genu- generally having it together, having kind of a level head. And that's why she's able to help so many people and be so connected. I like it to even say if Vignette is then a Pisces, a, like if we went Taurus, they would sex, you know, sextile each other. And that's really like into each other and even if she stayed Aries like that's a lot of horns that's a lot of hooves that's a lot of opinions and they're both like they're not pushovers you know like they both are very like strong 
phase up in this up in this mug. I mean, honestly, I'm just rooting for Vignette, Philo, and Tourmaline to all be just a throuple and just move to a farm and like get away from this nonsense and just milk goats and paint each other naked. That's hot. I mean, I like truly like it's it's distracting. Okay, Carnival Row is distracting. They're just all very, very hot together. That's been our breakdown of Carnival Row. Let us know in the comments if you agree with our astrological assessments. What signs do you think they are? Sound off. If you love astrology and want more, check out our other episodes of In the Stars where we break down other prime shows or listen to our podcast, What's Your Sign? We are, are available wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube and new episodes every week. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what other Amazon Prime shows you want us to break down. That's all for us. We'll see you next time in the stars. Mm-hmm.